Well, a good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever it is for you. It is Wednesday, and this is the break of dawn on prayer time in Israel. And for us uh, in the Netherlands, we're in different time zones, but the break of dawn prayer, the reason we do that is because it's pretty powerful if you look at it in the scriptures. And so there's a lot of power packed right into this hour um, historically. Anyway, today is the African Watch, and I am going to turn it over to our host. Uh, is it Edward? Um, are you up for the hosting? Yes. Good We're morning. On. Morning, everyone. To this day of another wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. I invite Sister Liz to lead us in an opening word of prayer. Thank you, Pastor Edward. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise. Lord, I thank you because your word says in Psalm 34, 1 to 3 says, I will exalt thee, O Lord. At all times, I will exalt thee, including this hour. We exalt thee in this platform this morning. We glorify your name, Father. Your praise will always be on our lips, Lord Jesus, for that great and mighty things you have done for us. We praise you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we will glorify your name in all situations. We come before you this morning from every nation worshiping you in our own tongues. How beautiful, how glorious it is to come together in unity. Lord, you are faithful. We present this altar before you this morning and we say, Lord Jesus, have your way. Let the heavens over our lives be open wherever we are. Let the gates of heaven be open unto us and let our prayers this morning, our supplications, ascend unto you as a sweet smelling savour in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit others that are yet to join us into your hand. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will make it easy for them for, to join us, O oh God. We clear the atmosphere. We clear all the lines. We decree that there will be no disruption of any kind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Have your way in this meeting. Glorify your name alone in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are all welcome. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lee. Amen and amen. Amen. We are going to continue in praise to our God. And I'm going to read Psalm Psalm, one, uh, Psalm 47 after which we'll play a song of praise and I'll encourage us to feel free to express praise to our God, even with, with clapping of hands, even with dancing. Psalm 47 says, Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with the voice of triumph, for the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth, he will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises, for God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together, the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Amen. Amen. So, share this song as we continue our praise to God. Amen and amen and amen. 
Amen and a big amen. Amen. To our king, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Amen and amen. We are going to hear God's word from our brother, Pastor Michael, and he'll be sharing us on the topic, guard up your loins, the days are here. Guard up your loins, the days are here. Over to you, Pastor Michael. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Edward, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening for to every one of you uh, on the platform. Uh, first and foremost, I have to uh, apologize that I cannot share my video because um, once again, uh, Africa's uh, circumstances and situation struck early this morning. There is no electricity where I am. So if I share my video everywhere, it's very dark. So you can see now, you cannot even see my face. So that is why I have to just uh, go without, um, without video. Uh, but we thank the Lord that at least uh, we are still able to hear one another. I was preparing for this, so all my gadgets are well charged, so I know that I can survive um, uh, the session. So I want to say a short word of prayer, and then I will continue. Thank you all for the privilege to be able to be called upon to, uh, to bring God's word. It's such a privilege. Uh, let's pray. Father, I'm so thankful to you. Uh, for the joy to be able to be on this platform. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've been doing uh, on this platform. Thank you for the privilege of the global community. And thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and mercy, the grace that always comes from you, your love and your mercy that you always show to us. And Lord, we are grateful that at this moment, oh Lord, um, uh, you want to share, you want to speak to us. So, Lord, I ask that I, I will not speak of my own, but I will only speak as your Holy Spirit will give me utterance and so that all the praise and all the glory and all the honor shall be to you and to you alone. Holy Spirit of God, I ask for your help, your guidance, and your wisdom, even at this moment in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. There are two scriptures which I'm going to share this morning. And I believe that the spirit of the Lord will breathe upon uh, those two scriptures. And then uh, whatever is the mind of God, I pray that the Lord will speak that with us and give us uh, understanding. I'm going to be reading first from the book of Judges, uh, Judges chapter 7, from verse 1 to verse 8. And then I will also quickly go to uh, the, the book of Joel chapter three. So let me read right now. I'm reading right now from the book of Judges, uh, chapter seven, and um, from verse one to eight. Um, and I'm reading, it says, then Jerubal, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the well of Harod, so that the camp of Midianites, so that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of Moray in the valley. And the Lord said to most, and the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to go, for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. Now, therefore, Proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. That is the first lesson for us to learn when we are in battle. Verse 4 But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. 
So he brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue, as a dog, as a dog laps, he shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink, and the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. And the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. So the people took provisions and their trumpets in their hand, and he sent away all the rest of Israel, every man to his tent, and retained those 300 men. Now the camp of Midian was below in the valley. Now very quickly, like I said earlier, I'm going to read again uh, from the book of Joel, chapter 3, and I'll read very quickly from, book of, from verse 9. Joel 3 from verse 9. And it said, proclaim these among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble all, assemble and come. All you nations and gather together all around, cause your mighty ones to go down there, O Lord. Let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. May the Lord bless the hearing of his and, and the reading and the hearing of his word in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our beloved people of God this morning, when I use the word, guard up your loin, we're looking at the relevance of the, that statement, I believe when the Spirit of God rather gave us that theme for us to guard up our loins, we'll be looking at the fact that, but we don't wear garment because the loin is another word to represent the garment that in our days today, we don't wear a garment. Of course, that is true. We may not be wearing a garment in terms of what both men and women wears. However, we still do need, especially as people of God, to wear a garment. And that is the garment that the Bible describes as the garment of righteousness, to be in right standing with the Lord our God. So, Guard up your loins, which means that number one thing that God is trying to challenge us about this morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it may be where you are, is the fact that in this journey and in this season that we are out with God, we can but we are our garment. It's important for us to put on the garment of righteousness which means to be in right standing with the Lord, to be in right standing with him, to be on the same page. That is what it means by righteousness, to be on the same page with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When you read the book of Judges that we read, the 300 people that the Lord eventually chose to go to war, while Gideon and God were in conversation as to the requirement of the people that he would choose. They were not part of that dialogue. It is not as if God was speaking to everybody among the 10,000 or among why they were even 30,000. So, okay, all right, this is what I'm going to do. God was only speaking to Gideon. It was supposed to be a private conversation between God and Gideon. That I'm going to choose a few people who will do this precious assignment for me. I want a few handful of people 
who will go to this particular specific warfare for me. And I've got the requirement for them. In that same private conversation, the requirement for giving, number one, there must be people who are not fearful. There must be people who are really, truly, sincerely ready for war. And out of, look at, look at, out of over 30,000, over 22,000 of them were fearful. So number one, they passed the first requirement of boldness. They passed the first requirement of what? Readiness. They were prepared mentally, psychologically, physically. They were truly, sincerely ready for the assignment that God had for them. And when I use the word, guard up your loins, the days are here, beloved people of God. The Lord is asking the 38 people who are here this morning, the 38 of us, are you mentally, are you psychologically, are you spiritually on the same page with the Lord at this season? A lot is happening, beloved. Thank God for COVID. Thank God for what is happening between America and Russia. Thank God for all the signs that we can see in our days. And thank God for, how will I call it, the hoof beefs. You know, it, when you say uh, approaching hoof, hoof beefs, being that when the horses are running, sometimes when there are many of them, before you see them, you begin to hear the sound of their, their, of their feet the tromping of their, of their feet on the ground because they are running and they are coming. Can you, can you hear the sound of their feet? Are you on the same page with the King Itana at this season? Beloved, God is choosing a few people who are going to be on the same page with him, who are going to be like the men of Issachar vision, who understands the time. So even though there were 32 or that over 30,000 of these people of God that were called to go to war, more than 22,000 of them were not mentally, psychologically, spiritually ready. They were not ready. So when the sound came, if you know you are afraid, just go. Let me know if you are ready, want to go back. Let's hear you. If you want to go back, Raise up your hand. We will let you go. Wow, it was the opportunity that over 22 of them were waiting for. Ah, thank God, thank God. People quickly, quickly, they packed their load. They went back. They were not on the same page. They were not like Jotham. The Bible said Jotham became great because he prepared himself before the Lord is God. Beloved, God is expecting us to be set aside, prepared for war, ready for what God is doing at this moment, having our ears on the ground, connecting to the voice of the Father, connecting to the mind of the King for the moment, being on the same page with God. The second requirement is the fact that they need to drink with their hands lapping like a dog. Wow. How did these 300 people got to have an insight to that? They were not just only mentally, psychologically ready. That means one of their hands has to be on their weapon. They have to be half standing, half kneeling, so that once there is a sound of war, it's easier for them to put out, put out their weapon and be ready to fight. In other words, they were not distracted by pleasure. They were not distracted by that so-called break. They were not going to allow anything to cause a distraction for them. They were fully, fully set for what God is doing at the moment. Beloved people of God, how much are you as a watchman, especially as you as a watchman, how much are you on the same page with the king? 
How much are you ready for what God is doing at the moment? If God were to say it is time for the expression, the Bible says the earnest expectation of the creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. If God were to say, I want the expression of my sons, are you ready to be expressed to the world, to be showcased to the world as those who are on the same page with the king at this season? We are in a very peculiar season, beloved people of God. And when I say the days are here, so the Lord have told us about in Luke chapter 17, when Jesus Christ was talking about uh, the, the, the circumstances of his own return. He said, it's just like in the days of Noah, when people were eating and people were drinking, and no one, and everybody was getting married, and no one was ready, then I then 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 then, 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 the, then the rain came. Jesus Christ says, So shall it be in the days of my return. And he also said, So also shall it be like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were eating, they were drinking, they were not ready. Then the fire came. Beloved, if the trumpet were to sound today, how ready are you as a watchman? This is a call for you as a watchman. And when you look at, in the olden days, the way they guard up their loins, in other words, that they are already wearing their loins. So when it is for them to guard it up, what they do is to hold to their front the excess cloth. They pull it to the front, grab the old excess weight of the cloth to the front. That's number one. Number two, they pull it in between their knees, in between their legs, to the back. So when they get to the back, they split it to two at the back, and from their back, they wrap it around themselves, and then they have guarded their loins and ready for war. To be ready for war does not mean you have to remove the garment of righteousness. But it means that you need to know how to wrap it around yourself, to be ready, to take away the excesses, remove the distractions, get ready, beloved people of God. Be on the same page with the king. That while people are saying this, you must know what is happening as a watchman, as the people that God has chosen at this season and at this moment. We call it read from the book of Judges, chapter 3, that God says, he said, get ready, raise up the men of war. Let the weak say, I am strong. You know what? This is not a season for us to begin to give excuses. Let us prepare ourselves, beloved people of God. Prepare yourself and get ready. Remember the case of the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 11, where the Bible was talking about the fact that the king was having a dinner, a party. In Matthew chapter 22, and he invited people to come over. And eventually he asked his servant to go gather everybody to come. At the same time, in Matthew 22 verse 11, there was a man who was in the, in the, in the dinner, in the party, but he was not wearing the garment. Much as, which was, was the significance of that? Much as the king wants all of us in the battle, he is not going to lower his standard. He wants us all, but the standard will be preserved. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible says, For the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every man that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Beloved, how prepared are you this season? These are the days, the days where anything can happen at any moment. The days of the trial of our faith. 
a, tra a day whereby you'll be asked for where you stand. If you speak against where they stand, they call you homophobia. If you speak against where they stand, you'll be named as a fanatic. These are the days of Amos chapter 8, verse 8, the days of famine of the word, where people are no more interested in standing by the standard of the word of God. But beloved, you cannot afford to be distracted. You cannot afford to let pleasure get you distracted. Remember when the prophet was talking about there was a prophet in the scriptures who went to, um, to, to, to speak to one of the kings. And as he was giving illustration, he said, while your servant was busy here and there, the person that was asked, that was asked to take care of escaped from me. And the, and, and the king said, you have judged yourself. So beloved people of God, I believe the Lord has spoken to us this morning. Let us lay our hearts, our ears at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the chest of the master like John the beloved. Let us be spiritually sensitive. Let us be watchful. Let us pray. Let's be like the wise virgins who kept oil in their lamp. Let's be ready, beloved. These are not the days for excesses. Let's put aside the excesses. They are distractions. Let's keep watch. Let's keep prayerful. Let's guard up our loins. The days are here. May the Lord God help us. May the Lord God grant us the grace to be like the men of Issachar Bishop who are on the same page with the king because they understand the time. May the Lord bless you and thank you for the opportunity to share with you. Over to you, Pastor Edward. Thank you. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Michael, for, for such a, a message, very timely for, for the days we are living in. I'm going to, before we go into the breakout session, I'll invite two people to, to receive the word in prayer briefly. Charity Shemio and, uh, and Daniel Lindman. Over to you, Charity. Mute your mic and pray. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pastor Edward. We just want to thank the Lord for, for the word that has come to us, and I would like us uh, to respond to it. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just want to thank you for your graciousness towards, towards us at this hour of dawn, uh, a powerful hour that you've called us across the nations to pray together. We receive this word with thanksgiving for this time. Lord, we thank you because you've spoken to us specifically that you're looking for a people who are not fearful. You're looking for a people who are sincere. Heavenly Father, as we come before your presence, we acknowledge that many times we are fearful of what you have given us, uh, what you're calling us to do, but yet you tell us that it is you who is going to strengthen us. This morning, we receive strength from you. We repent of any fearfulness and lack of awareness in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray that psychologically you're going to prepare us to be able to be used of you to read the times with understanding, to know what it is that you want to do. Lord, you tell us and you reminded us that you're, watch, you're looking for a people who are able to walk in righteousness and to guard up our loins. Father, we repent of excesses that we've been carrying. We repent of troubles that we've been looking around without understanding. And we ask that, Lord, you're going to teach us your ways. Heavenly Father, for each and every one of us who is in this watch, Lord, we pray that you'll help us to recognize who you are. You're calling a people who you are able to work with. We'll recognize who you are, God. We'll recognize what you want in this season, Heavenly Father. And above all, we'll recognize what we can be a blessing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Then, uh, Pastor Fenny, Pastor Fenny, are you there? Yeah, I'm there, Pastor Edward. Thank you. Please also pray, Pastor Fenny. Our Father, we thank you for the word that you have sent to us at such a time like this. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this trumpet that you have blown unto us at such a season like this. You call us to prepare for war. You call us to guide ourselves. You call us to understand the significance of our readiness for this warfare at such a time like this. Thank you for this precise admonition, this uh, instruction that you have brought to all of us as soldiers, as those you have raised for such a fierce warfare like this. Thank you for your consideration for each of our lives. Lord, we want to humbly plead with you knowing that this battle is yours. And we are persuaded that the warfare had been accomplished already. You just need to engage us to see this eventual triumph by the word that you have sent to us this morning, Lord. We plead with you that you will grant unto each of our lives that in great readiness we shall March forth in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that it will please you to help us to be among the 0.01% that you eventually considered. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will help us to guide our loins. We ask that you help us to strap up the very same garment of righteousness around us, that you help us to deal with the excesses, that you help us to uh, to ensure that there is no looseness, that you help us not to be among those that will be carried away by the abundance and that will be carried away by the pleasure of the surplus, that you help us not to be given to greed, but that we will, O oh Lord, in readiness uh, stand before you in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh Lord, that you will help us that at such a season like this, we will wait upon you with readiness, that we will not uh, blink, that you will help us to be psychologically, to be mentally, to be spiritually ready for this warfare. And that we will stand with you and stand for you and stand by you. We are asking that you will help us and help each and every one of us on this call and you will help your people in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you have answered. And again, we plead with you for your servant whom you have used to bring this instruction that Lord, your great grace will be upon him. In the name of Yeshua, we ask that as we wait upon you, you will show forth your strength and your power even in our season. Thank you because you've answered. We pray in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Femi. Uh, and, and then uh, Daniel Lindman, if you're able. Daniel, are you there? Okay. Good morning. Yes, I, I am. Oh, yes, please. Uh, yes. I, I didn't understand very well what you mean. Uh, a prayer to receive the word, to receive the message we had. So my English is not the best, but I try. You, you can use your language. Okay. Uh, Lord, we thank you that you call us in your presence. And uh, we thank you that uh, you are uh, our Lord and we we ask you that you will 
uh, reveal to everyone of us your your will and the uh, measure that you have for us so that we receive all of your grace all of this call to to be a soldier in your army all of that that you have prepared for us in in this season i thank you for my brothers and sisters all around the world i thank you that you are preparing an army of of righteous people to raise up and to to fight for your kingdom i uh, bless your holy name and thank you that you are on the way with us in jesus name amen 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 amen, amen. 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 we're now going to break out in two rooms for 12 minutes and um, i've pasted the prayer points in the chat section you may not be able to exhaust them but the ones you'll be able to handle uh, please do i will now hand over to sue to launch us out into outer space great thank thank you edward those are great questions uh you should be able to go right into your um right into your rooms okay <clears throat> Amen. Welcome back. I uh, trust you had a good time of praying together. Yes. And uh, even as we were praying, as reminded of the scripture in First Samuel, sorry, Second Samuel, uh, chapter three, verse one, which says, "Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David." But David grew stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. Mm. And I believe we are in the days when the ecclesia, the house of David, is growing stronger and stronger. Mm. I'll invite Sister Liz to lead us in a closing prayer. And then after that, welcome Sue to share with us any other communication and announcements. Over to you, Sister Liz. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we really appreciate you, Lord. We thank you for this platform that you have provided for us to remind us of the truth that you have, the plan and purposes that you have for us. Lord, we have received your word this morning. And we ask for the grace, for the enablement to be able to fulfill this, this word. That we will not be fearful. We will go and do that which you have committed into our hearts. Lord in heaven, we thank you for everyone in this watch to, this morning. We ask, oh God, that you will grant all of us the grace, oh God. You have called us in one way or the other to fulfill our divine calling. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will help each one of us to fulfill our calling. None of us will go unfulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be thy name. We bless everyone in this call. We ask that the Lord, the light of God, will shine upon your lives. Yes, Lord. The light, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, Father, the light of God will shine on your way, your path, your home. Yea, the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. And so shall it be as you go in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the grace to subdue every power of darkness that will stop us not to fulfill our destiny in Christ Jesus. Father, we give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We are so encouraged every time you guys uh, bring forth the word. Thank you so much. That was a strong word tonight, Michael. And um, uh, we look forward to what God has next. I do want to um, remind people this weekend, I put it in the chat. Um, 
we is we are supporting the Global Day of Prayer for Tech. And if you you, you can't think of another industry that touches every cultural mountain that there is. We're all using tech tonight. And believe me, there are, there's a prayer movement that's rising up in the tech industry. Wouldn't that be awesome to see more and more of that raised up in uh, all these um, industries that uh, serve us day to day from our telephones to, from our phones to our computers to uh, the business in the, in the church, the businesses outside the church, there's commerce being done via tech. But I, I can tell you working with these people, they, they are some of the brightest um, people out there and they are also on fire for the Lord. And so let's, um, we are hosting a, a prayer room. It'll be a 24 hour prayer room, it won't be public, uh, but I will be sending out the link to that room to you. Please come in and join uh, during those 24 hours at your convenience and at your calling. Um, I would ask people even now to start praying what they're being called to in terms of committing to helping us in that prayer room. Last year, it was a real fire furnace and it, there was a lot of fruit. I, believe it or not, there's prayer cells rising up in Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and many of the n names that you've heard. And um, it, it emanated from that global day of prayer for tech last year. So. Here you go. Uh, I'll send out the emails tomorrow. It'll have a different link. It's not this link. Um, and again, the hours are different uh, between North America and Europe. And I have them on the on the um, chat. So can everybody unmute and let's give a send off blessing to Africa. Thank you so much, you guys, for the it's great work tonight. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank 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 you.